division preview for the a NFC West. Yeah. And we're we have a lot to talk about here. And this NFC West contains the world champion, defending champion, Los Angeles Rams. So with that being said, let's talk about the odds and the division chances for these teams in the NFC West, first and foremost, and let you know who is favored. And that is, of course, the defending champion Rams. They are plus 125. Next in line is the San Francisco 49ers, plus 200. Third favorites to win this division are the Arizona Cardinals. And last but not least, you have Drew Locke's Seattle Seahawks bringing in the caboose on this train. So this is a nice division. Like, I mean, obviously this is a competitive division. San Francisco is dealing with some quarterback, uh, you know, advancement when it comes to Trey Lance moving up. They've moving on from Jimmy G. Arizona's dealing with a guy that doesn't know how to do homework. You have the Seattle Seahawks who have a guy that a couple guys that they just uh, what, what are they doing? And then you get the Los Angeles Rams, who uh, they're they're well coached. They have a pretty good quarterback, and they have a nice team of veterans on that. And one of the best defensive players in the world, uh, in the in the league. So there you go. So and that's why. And and what's interesting to me, looking at this snapshot of like the division odds, is San Francisco's not far behind the Rams. In in these in these stand and and I mean the top three, Rams, Niners, and Cardinals are all pretty close in this mix, plus one twenty five, plus two hundred, plus three hundred. So they're saying that it might be a little bit of a race between these teams as they go down the the course of the season. But Scotty, just initially, your thoughts on the odds? Uh, I mean, I think the odds make sense. L listen, no, like the 49ers are the clearly the toughest team to project in this division just based off of like we don't know how it's going to look with trey lance for a whole season um now he did play in a couple games last year when jimmy was hurt and it wasn't great um things i've heard out of san francisco camp is kind of listen he's very inconsistent there's going to be a lot of highs and a lot of lows with with that team so fortunately he's joining a roster that's clearly very talented i mean we have i mean la san fran was the nfc championship game last year so we have the two representatives in the nfc championship game and this division so clearly he's joining a talented roster but tough to project um but those odds to me seem normal make sense i i don't know that i have like a, a i would probably bet i mean if i'm if i'm betting any of them, I'm betting San Fran because they're boom or bust. But if they boom, they're going to be the best team in this. Like if Trey Lance is able to piece it together where he's a little more consistent, that, I mean, they could easily win this division. I think the Cardinals is a sucker bet. I don't think the Cardinals, I mean, the Cardinals might as well. Why don't we just pencil them in for like 10 and seven and a first round exit right now? Because that's what's happening. Roger, yeah. Roger. Yeah. I think, you know, with this, this, it, this doesn't surprise me. You you asked me the other day, who's your dark horse in the okay. NFC? And I told you the San Francisco 49ers could be that dark horse. Because, I mean, there, there's still not a lot of people are giving them credit when it comes to their quarterback situation of Trey Lance moving up and stepping into a big role with this team for a full season. So we'll see how that looks. But let's, you know what? I want to I want to kick things off. You, you mentioned the Arizona Cardinals. We had some news with the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, Marquise Brown was charged with criminal speeding today. So there was that. And they're coming into this off season with, you know, or this this new season with a lot of questions with Kyler Murray and how he prepares for games. We talked a lot about that on our last show. So let's let's start there. Start there with the the Arizona Cardinals and what we think that they could be here because honestly, the Arizona Cardinals I don't know if I have a lot of high hopes for them in this division and you know i've seen some projections as high as 11 and 6 i'll take the under on that i'll take the under on the 11 and 6 uh but cliffs kingsbury i feel like a lot of people either like him or you don't but key free agents bringing in marquise brown who just got in trouble right um you lost christian kirk which you don't want to pay him what you know he was being paid elsewhere and uh chase edmonds ended up leaving to the miami dolphins so uh and chandler jones and Ch gone. Yep, yep chandler jones is gone um so you have a lot of different 
exits that I feel like were semi relevant pieces on those uh, on the roster last year that did very well in the regular season, just didn't do well in the playoffs, obviously. Uh, key additions, they got tight end Trey McBride when it came to the draft. So, you know, they can see if they can fit him into the mix there. But, you know, Kyler Murray, I think, is the biggest question here for me. And I want to know if he's able to take that next next step. He's a he's a very mobile quarterback. He gets he's has an injury history. He has a nice little little uh clause in his contract that was taken out about him studying, but you know, he doesn't need to study, right? He's fine. He's playing his games on the side, he's doing his thing. Uh, Already tested positive. He's clearly studying. <laughs> uh Arizona, you know, when it comes to the wide receivers, they'll have DeAndre Hopkins. So I think they could do some make uh make some okay, you know, moves in this division when it comes to staying towards the upper echelon, but I mean, Zach Ertz as a tight end, James Conner running back, AJ, old man AJ Green, just chilling. He's hanging out. Like, I feel like this roster is aging. JJ Watts getting older on the defensive side of the ball. And I don't, I don't know. Buda Baker on the back end. He's okay. He's fine. I don't know where it, I don't see a lot of hype for me, but uh, real quick in the chat. Uh, and before I get your thoughts here, I want to jump into this. Let's see. Uh, worried about my cards. The D-Hop suspension. The Kyler stuff. Kyler gets COVID. Now the Hollywood Brown arrest today. Not good. Of course, JK. There's a lot of distractions right now. And that's what I worry about with a team like this. Marie in the chat. My take here. Look out for Seattle. Drew seems to be spending those... Spreading, uh, <laughs> probably. Yeah, spreading those wings, you're in trouble. If Lance isn't on, cards are third. Ba -ba -ba. So Marie likes, and she still loves her Drew Locke, which, hey, Marie, I give you props for sticking with Drew. I give you a lot of love for sticking with Drew. I'm, let's just say, personally, I'm fine with him being in Seattle and not here. What's up, G-Girl? How we doing? Let me give a shout out to G-Girl. Guys, go follow G-Girl if you are not already. She crushes content when it comes to all sports, football, basketball, you name it. Uh, she is incredible. She streams all the time during the week. Make sure you go check out her channel. Hit those clip, uh, the link in the chat and give her some love. Give her a follow. You won't regret it. So she knows her shit for sure. Uh, we have a Absolutely. lot of we have a lot of women uh, that represent in Action Lab, and I mean I found I found them in general. No, I don't want to I don't want to alienate the men, but they seem to be a lot smarter than men, oh, which we knew we knew oh. we knew as men we know that we're just <laughs> we're uh, the, our whole life is spent trying to fool women into thinking we're not the dumbest people around. It's true. right. It's true. Right. <laughs> Right. When in reality we are, Chris, we're it, very much that. We go down that um, route. Yeah. Um, speaking of speaking of dumb people. Oh, or you're not finished. Go ahead. No, no, no. That was where I was going to leave it. I want to get your thoughts on the Arizona Cardinals here and where you see them. Uh, it, well, yeah. you've kind of yeah. already talked about it a little bit. But uh, any, any I've, other a, I've, a, I've addressed the Cardinals quite a bit. Yeah. And listen, I just I don't see it. I I question Kyler. Um, I worry about his motives now. He's got the contract. We'll see what happens there. D Hop suspended for six weeks. We saw when he got hurt at the end of last year what that did to that offense. It was a disaster. So they're in trouble the first six weeks. Hollywood Brown gets uh, arrested for speeding over eighty five today. I'm not that concerned about that. Like that over eighty five. Like what was the speed limit? I don't know. Um, not. A, I mean, he was speeding, so Maybe, not I great. Mean, but at the same time, not that. There's a lot worse. Hopefully, so, it wasn't in a school zone. If uh, otherwise, yeah. Don't go. Don't go eighty five in a school zone. Um, <laughs> just, it's like a third, it's a trap. third something like a level three misdemeanor, and I'm like, what? Like. That even seems aggressive. Anyway, uh, he was like booked, and I'm like, for speeding? I didn't even know you could be booked for speeding, Chris. I didn't know that was a thing. Anyway, now I mean, I'm worried about his hands and the fact that he drops a lot of passes, but not so much the fact that he was speeding on the highway today. Um, they just don't have like a ton of playmakers on defense for me. The defense is like solid, not spectacular. <laughs> they just feel like a ten and seven, nine and eight team. Like that's not going anywhere promising but uh, i mean a lot of a lot of people will say and in the, the sayings out there the worst thing you can be in the nfl is mediocre and that's where i feel like arizona is right now yeah yeah 
they're they're, they're going to be middle of the road for me. And even if they have a great regular season, I don't see them doing anything in the playoffs. I'm with you. Uh, so next up, Seattle. Let's talk about Seattle a little bit. Marie mentioned Seattle about Drew Locke, acquired from the Denver Broncos here. And I mean, last year their record was seven and ten. I think that's going to take a dip. Uh, I, I forgot to take a look at the win totals for for Arizona. By the way, let me go real quick. Arizona win total over under eight and a half. Same same minus one ten for the under uh, eight and a half. So just just. Throw I it. mean, that's pretty. That's pretty. That's that's low for a team that went eleven and six last year. They get put at eight and a half this year. So Vegas isn't high on them either. Yeah, and. Seattle, speaking of Vegas not being high on them, is set at five and a half games. And the un- over five and a half is the favorite to win this one, minus 135, over five and a half games. I think they have a chance to get there, but I am not excited to bet on anything Seattle's got going on. Watching Seattle and Drew Locke or um, um, Geno Smith does not excite me as much as as one might think marie even has the under at five and a half that would which i mean that would be you'd be getting some value there i think they're plus 110 uh if they end up but currently espn's depth chart has geno smith as the starter i don't think that's it'll the, it'll, it'll, it'll be, be drew lock but the fact that they're it's a quarterback battle again we saw this in denver i i don't love that there's a quarterback battle that's that's still being worked out with a new guy in Drew Locke that you guys believe is going to be the guy and you still haven't had like the stamp of approval from the Seattle coaching staff that he is the guy over a guy like Geno Smith. It's the same Teddy Bridgewater stamp of approval that we know and love in Denver from last year, right? It's like if you can't beat Geno Smith or if you can't beat Teddy Bridgewater and it's like close, that's a problem for your starting quarterback. Let's just put it out there. Let's say it like it is. Other key agent departures, you had lost Russell Wilson to the Denver Broncos. That came over in the trade with Drew Locke. You lost what? Gerald Everett, tight end. He went to the Chargers. Uh, they drafted Kenneth Walker the third in round two of the draft. So uh, I think the biggest thing to focus on here is the fact that you got to figure out who's playing quarterback for you. I think, you know, there's a, I mean, Pete Carroll, I don't know how long he has. I think his clock is ticking in Seattle. I don't know how, how long he's going to get there. You did sign DK Metcalf. There's a lot of people in, in NBA and the NFL that are saying, it's giving a lot of love to their teams and trying to stay put DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett wide receiver core. They're in good shape, right? Uh, they've been, you know, subject of trade rumors in recent months as well so but they seem to be staying put for the most part Noah Fant I think is going to be a nice piece for them there's some decent offensive pieces here in Seattle so I think that whoever plays quarterback they'll be able to get a few wins under their belt but I don't I mean obviously Vegas and I don't have high hopes for the Seattle Seahawks in this division it's a tough division it is. It is. I think it's still the best division, despite the Seattle probably dropping off a little bit. It's still the best division in the NFC top to bottom in my mind. Um, yeah, I mean, I I think we should have a strict policy on this show that we don't talk about Drew. No, 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 no. As we, have a, Luck. we have a lot of singing um, on this show, by the way. No, yeah. Well, <laughs> pe- the people wanted it, Chris. You want, they wanted All right? singing. Uh, yeah, they're not going to be great at quarterback. Um, they're going to struggle there, but I, I still think Pete Carroll can win games. Like, I don't think people like him and how he does it. And I get that he's old school and things like that, but he can still win some games. So I would lean over. Um, I, I think they can get to six wins. Uh, but is it an exciting team? No. I mean, you got DK and Tyler on the outside, which again is a nice one, two combo. Nothing to hate there. Um, on the defensive side of the ball, you lost Bob, Bobby Wagner. You let him go. Um, and even bigger than that, you lost Carlos Dunlap. 
uh, football wife will tell you that's the greatest defensive pass rusher in the history of the game. I don't know who he's playing for this next season, Chris, but I think he's going to be damn good wherever he went. He'd be damn um, good. Uh, Roger, Roger. But who they did add, Chris? Uh, Noah Fant, uh, Shelby Harris. Um, a lot of nice pieces on offense and defense there. I don't know where those guys came from either. No idea. Um, Listen, I, I they're the worst team in this division. I don't think that's hard to project. Uh, they're not. They're rebuilding a little bit, which is ironic when they have a the oldest coach in the league. Uh, that's kind of a weird thing to do, but uh, we'll see. I think they're Let's secretly they're go. secretly hoping that Drew Locke like finally figures it out, and they have like they find a diamond in the rough somehow. So they're gonna give Drew Locke the start. And they're going to give him a season. And if he doesn't work out, they'll they'll find a quarterback in the draft because they'll probably be picking towards the top. Yep. Yep. Pretty pretty cut and dry there. All right. Next up, we want... I'll to- be right back, Chris. Okay, cool. Uh, let's dive into the 49ers, the San Francisco 49ers. By the way, spam code yellow in the chat for Scotty right now. It's it's the, the tradition we have whenever one of us has to go take care of business. There you go. I'll get it started. Code yellow in the chat. But, uh, yeah, this division is going to be one of the better divisions, the better division in the NFC. We're going to dive into the AFC. Don't go anywhere here soon. AFC West, I have a feeling. Don't tell Scotty, but it's going to get a little bit aggressive. (laughs) Scotty always gets defensive about his Chiefs and the Broncos. So we might have some fireworks coming up. We'll have some fun with it, but just hang with us. And we also have a, a tribute to, uh, we have a nice little end ending with Vin Scully at the end. And we also have coming in hot. So make sure you guys stick around for the end of the show. It's it's worth it. And it'll get you through the rest of your week. And you'll feel, feel heart warmed and just fuzzy inside. I, I Honestly, when I was putting the show together, I wanted to include this. And it made me feel like the world is in a good place. So even given all the crazy things happening in the world, but stick with us. You don't want to, you don't want to uh, miss the end of the show. Dicola, don't forget to mute him. Uh, he got a little upset last time I muted him. So I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm, I'm going to let him go. He's going to do his rants. It's, it's going to happen. Do you like how we talk about Scotty when he's not here? It's great. Uh, but let <laughs> We're going to dive into the San Francisco 49ers next. Now, San Francisco 49ers, their over under total is set for, let me see it, uh, nine and a half. And that's minus 145. So Vegas is saying that they're most likely going to win at least 10 games in this division. So 10 games is a pretty decent amount for a San Francisco team going into a season with trey lance obviously trey lance they've moved on from jimmy g jimmy g say what you will about jimmy garoppolo you know he i mean he won games right he's not sexy well he is (laughs) he is sexy but (laughs) now i'm getting myself into trouble um i was talking about uh jimmy g they moved on from jimmy g you know Mm -hmm. he's not sexy from a quarterback and then i was like well he is sexy from a quarterback standpoint mm. i mean he is jimmy gq he's jimmy gq so i was like he wins games but they want to move on i mean that that's the thing jimmy g i don't know that might be a mistake he, who, depending on he took him to a super bowl and an nfc championship the yeah. last two years he was healthy i mean he wins i mean in in a system right uh, no, over under nine and a half for their win total, and it's minus one forty five for the over. So they're Vegas likes them to win at least ten games, double digits. So it's just an interesting number, knowing they're going into a season with Trey Lance and knowing they don't know what they're getting there. But uh, Elijah Mitchell, they signed Debo Samuel, obviously Brandon Ayuk is there in the the second wide receiver spot. George Kittle, one of the best tight ends in the NFL, and you know they they just have a nice nice offensive roster that can you know do a lot of things under Kyle Shanahan getting things done in San Francisco offensive mind he's made it to that point where he's established himself to get far into a playoff run he just needs to get over the hump he just needs that guy to to do it to to get those big wins you know when it 
you know, gets deep into the playoffs. But overall, I mean, this team, I haven't projected to finish second in this division. Scotty, where do you have them? Uh, second seems like a safe bet. True. I want to push the envelope and say first. And it wouldn't shock me if they finished first, but without knowing exactly what Trey Lance is going to do, it's hard to put him there. Yeah. Uh, uh, J- chairman. Yep. I believe Jimmy G has the most Super Bowl rings of any active QB other than Brady. Roger, Roger. That's true. And I and Jimmy played an equal role in those Super Bowls. So um, congrats to him. <laughs> um but yeah, that is technically true. Technically true. I also hear that everyone thinks Jimmy G cost the Niners a Super Bowl against the Chiefs, and that's uh, that's absolutely absurd. Uh, <laughs> uh, heck, I'll take him over Danny Dimes. Says G Girl. Uh, Jimmy? I uh, think Jimmy. I think Jimmy's a serviceable guy. He's just not like u- uber excited. Like here's here's the bottom line with the Niners this year. Trey Lance. So here the Niners had no choice. The Niners had to do this. Whether they think they're better off with Trey Lance or Jimmy, they had to do this because they they moved so much capital last year in the draft. And they moved up twice. They made two separate trades to get to the number three pick. Chris. They put a lot. They gave up a ton of capital to take Trey Lance. You can't draft a quarterback after trading up twice at the number three overall pick and then sit him for two years. You can't do it. Like, you'd be roasted. You'd be crucified up there by by the fans and, and whatnot. So, that that I, more than anything, I think that based where they were headed with this decision. They decided, we have to move on with him. Unfortunately, Jimmy was hurt, so they couldn't even trade him because teams weren't ready to take the risk when Jimmy was had an injured shoulder, so they weren't even able to move Jimmy. So now you have this awkward situation. But maybe, like, I could see a scenario where Jimmy becomes the starter this year. If Trey Lance falls flat on his face and just plays awful the first few weeks, I think you have to give him at least four weeks. But after four weeks, if Trey Lance is awful and Jimmy's still on the roster, why wouldn't you go back to him? Totally. And- um, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm no, I'm with you. I think like you're gonna have a weird situation. That's the one caveat of the San Francisco 49ers that I think could be a distraction at some point. If the 49ers have a slow start, all of a sudden you have these rumors swirling, and those you, you, those become distractions. Those are real things that happen to NFL teams that you know take away from what you're trying to do in the practices week to week, in the off off days, and like the social media. Ho. Oh, how Lance is struggling. Are you going to go back to Jimmy? Are you going to, which like, is, which is why they have to train him. They, they, they need to trade. Jimmy. They need to get rid of that distraction. A hundred percent. And I think that, I mean, football wise talking about Jimmy G's facial hair. And that's another distraction, Chris. There's so many distractions with Jimmy. Get that good looking dude out of town. Uh, get him out of here. Just, just He's handsome. He's handsome bro. from what I've been told, Chris. Just, um, I'm sick of seeing that gorgeous face in town. Get I'm out. not sure. I'm not sure Trey Lance can hold a candle there. I don't know. <laughs> you guys, let me know. Um, you ladies, let me know in the chat. Is Trey Lance good looking? I don't know. Um, uh, girl, the ladies. I, if I'm taking, all right. Here, can I can I put a poll in the chat? And this this is for men too. It, but guys have crushes, right? Men crushes, right? Yeah, but it's. Mo- well, I mean, for me, it's mostly based off personality. I'm a personality guy, Chris. That's more important. Like I, but I feel like everyone's every single guy's man crush is like Ryan Reynolds. Every every man wants to just marry Ryan Reynolds. If you had to pick a guy to marry, it'd be Ryan Reynolds. I don't even think you're listening to me, Chris. You're too focused. I, I, I love Ryan Reynolds. He's great. Yeah, everyone loves Ryan Reynolds. That's the that's the problem. Every single man would pick Ryan Reynolds as like their number one man crush. Maybe like a Paul Rudd mixed in. Maybe a Paul Rudd. Those are the two fun guys, you know, just guys you'd want to hang out with. I don't know. Anyway, oh, we're getting Trey, way, way off track. Here. Trey Lance is off and running in the chat with uh, he's the prettier guy. Oh, uh, all right. Here we go. Now the Jimmy G fans are coming. Through. Yeah, I, I like that. You called it. Who is prettier? Who's prettier? <laughs> I am pretty. Sorry. Singing again. Too much singing Just on the this. human jukebox. Uh, and Chairman is officially leaving the stream. Sorry, yeah. Chairman. 
the people voted and they want my singing. All this right? is what happened when you have the ladies here. See, I, I, I'm a man of who we have in the chat. We have a lot of ladies. And you know what? You know what? I'll vote for Jimmy G. I'll vote for Jimmy G. I mean, he's a good looking guy, right? Okay, there we go. Uh, cha chairman said, I don't want to marry Ryan Reynolds. I want to be Ryan Reynolds. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Scotty, Me too. Scotty is everyone's man crush. Looks like a younger Jack Vale. I don't know who that is, Chris. Who's Jack Vale? Google Jack Vale. Throw. Uh, <laughs> you know who Jack Vale is? I don't. Should I know? Should I know who Jack Vale is? Let me Google Jack Vale real quick. I'm just curious to see who Jack. Oh, he's, a he's a YouTuber. A younger Jack Vale. He's like 48 years old, Chris. <laughs> Bruh. I, I was like, oh, they're calling me young. Jack Vale's 48. <laughs> what? Holy hell. Who is this guy? Hold Some on. of his pictures look like he should be in prison, Chris. <laughs> I'll let y'all Google Jack Vale. He's, oh my gosh. I, I, don't, I don't see it, Scotty. I, I might have to sign off. I might have to. This might be the end for me. You didn't even get a chance to talk about your Chiefs. I mean, that's how bad it is. I gotta go. I, I was now. JK did it. He knocked me off a stream for the first time ever based off calling me a younger Jack Vale, who in some pictures, maybe, maybe Google's not doing him justice, but he looks like he might be a mass murderer. Like he might kill people for a living. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> Oh man, people! Uh. <laughs> wow. Well, hey, Trey's getting some votes, but let's get to the Rams here. Get to the the LA Rams and talk about that, Scotty. I've never seen you without a hat. Uh, no, I wear a hat I, without a hat sometimes on the stream. Today is not that day. Uh, I'm actually getting a haircut in like uh, maybe tomorrow, Chris. I'm Yo. going on the road to get a haircut. Uh, to Yo, Kansas. Hold I'm going on. to Kansas tomorrow, guys. Oh, oh, he, oh, Charlie's going out to Kansas. I was gonna say he's coming to your house. I'm coming over for a haircut myself. No, no, Chuckles is also going to Kansas, so I'm gonna get a haircut in a whole different state tomorrow. I'm driving probably nine hours with three children, five and under, in my car to get a haircut, Chris. And yet he'll still so, wear a hat for the next stream. So no, dude, maybe not. Maybe maybe not. It depends how good Chuckles does, you know? <laughs> Let's get to the Rams. Notable just storylines with the Rams. The Rams finished last season 12 and 5. And with a Super Bowl win to go with it. Obviously, you have Sean McVay, who is one of the better coaches in the league. He's a great offensive mind, running things with, you know, uh, you know, Matt Stafford, Cam Akers, uh, towards Achilles last July. So Obviously, we'll see, you know, what happens with, with some of those, uh, you know, returns for some of those injuries. But key free agent additions, they added Allen Robinson from the Chicago Bears, a nice stud from Chicago who, you know, did a lot for an organization that didn't do a lot. Then you also have uh, some some players that left replacing Robert Woods was Allen Robinson. And you also had Sonny Michelle go to the Dolphins. Odell Beckham is a free agent still. He's lingering out in the ether, out in the the stratosphere and just doing his own thing. Uh, they drafted uh, Kyron Williams round five. So they didn't really have a lot to, to, to go on in the draft, but they gave away all their picks, right? Scotty, they, they went all in no uh, draft. I don't, I'm not sure they have a draft pick in the next <laughs> century. Chris, <laughs> it's true. Didn't they, didn't they also lose in Dominican Sioux? Am I crazy? Uh, I believe so. It's it's not. I'm looking at a website as well that doesn't list it, but I'm almost certain he's not back. I think he's gone, and I think he's out there just hanging and, out and too. Did you say Von Miller? By the way, Chris, did and, you say Von Miller? And Von Miller left as well. Yep. Is he, that? I mean, that's kind of a big deal. He right? got. I mean, he is, but he's also aging year by year. I mean, here's the thing. Like, the thing I think about with Von Miller is like he left. Then he went over there, won a Super Bowl, but like they didn't have a oh, high price. Sue was in Tampa. What am I doing? McDougats, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That is that's on me. Um but wow. You know, Vaughn Vaughn's kind of been bouncing around. I mean, he hasn't had he didn't have a lot of takers right off the bat. So I feel like the, the people are slowly he the money that Vaughn wanted 
versus the amount of years that he has left. I think what is, is scary people. <laughs> Slap Scotty. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I deserve it. And everyone that's saying three kids in a car to Kansas and shoot me, and everyone's like, don't do it. Hey, you know what would be nice right now, guys? Is someone saying, hey, have a great trip. Maybe, <laughs> hey, have a lot of fun. Enjoy your time. Roger, Roger. It's going to be fine. <laughs> but instead, you guys are telling me to shoot myself. <laughs> Or that if you were me, you'd shoot myself. And it's hurtful. It's hurtful, guys. I love my children. Thank you, G-Girl. I will have a great trip. Who doesn't have a great trip when they go to Kansas? Going back for a family reunion. It's going to be a shit show. And I'm excited about it. It's a sort trap. Of, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> you'll, you'll have a great time, Scotty. I, I guarantee it. So, uh, Scotty, again, yep. let me just roll down this roster. That includes... Mm -hmm. And Dominic and Sue's on this roster, right? <laughs> includes Cooper Cup, who was statistically a freak last year. So, you got Akers, Cup, Robinson. Didn't, didn't even, he didn't even get 2,000 yards receiving. <laughs> Finished at like 1,900. What's he even doing? Weak. Weak. And uh, Van Jefferson is their third wide receiver option. But still have Tyler Higby. Nice option there, but Aaron Donald just... Aaron Donald and Leonard Floyd on the defensive side do a lot. Bobby Wagner was a nice addition from the Seattle Seahawks. We talked about Wagner in the offseason. Jalen Ramsey is still in the secondary. So there's a lot to like about what they're bringing back. And so from this standpoint, I still think that they are the favorites. I still think that they will win this division. So from that, you know, that's kind of what my projection is for this Rams team. They should make a nice run again this year. I don't know if they're, they're they, I don't, I don't have them winning it. Last year I did. This year I don't. Yeah, I mean, they're going to be in the mix in the NFC. They should, sh I mean, they're the best team on paper in this division. They're the defending champs. Um, you know, sometimes it's interesting to see, especially a first-time winner of a championship like this, how they come back and play the next season, whether they have that same drive and whatnot um but a talented team nonetheless with it, obviously mcveigh is one of the best coaches in the league uh you got cup with stafford and alan robinson i love alan robinson as an addition after losing obj although obj is still a free agent so who knows once obj is healthy he might sign with la and be in the mix in the in the playoffs or some somewhere around then so uh this seems really good um do i i mean what are the odds that they win win it again it's less than it's like 10 to 15 percent like it's not a high percentage that that's not me hating on the rams it's just like there's other teams that are really really good i mean if they make it against one of the top teams in the afc i think the afc is a little stronger than the nfc i don't think that's crazy to think i think certainly it, they're deeper in the afc there's way better quarterback play in the afc than the nfc we've talked about that um so, I mean, the NFC is gettable. You you look at the Rams. We talked about, obviously, I mean, we'll see. You know, you got Packers. Maybe Vikings get in the mix in the NFC North. NFC South, of course, you have the Bucks. They're probably the only team. And NFC East, I don't know. I mean, the Cowboys, maybe. A lot of people are hyping the Eagles. I'm not on that road. So, like, I mean, the NFC is very gettable. Very, very gettable. It's not deep, and it's not that strong. Um AFC. Compared to the AFC, well, which is and very, that's what the Los very, Angeles Rams. I think that's where the Los Angeles Rams will thrive. Is the fact that the NFC, I mean, Rams, Packers, Bucks, and then it kind of falls off there to the the, the 49ers are kind of like it, when it comes to the Vegas odds, they're like the next next echelon there. And I don't think they they're I don't I mean the Trey I mean, Lance and the Jimmy G stuff. I just for me. I just want so badly for the. I just want I, the Bucks cannot make the Super Bowl. That's all I care about in the NFC. <laughs> That's all you care. Yeah. <laughs> Tom Brady cannot make another damn Super Bowl. Can't happen. Chris. Oh, over under for the wins, uh, Chairman, and uh, welcome back, Clout. Over under for the win total on the Rams is, I believe, ten and a half. Ten and a half. Yep. So. Let's see. Ten and a half. They're the the. It's it's even odds. So no matter what. Over or under, it's minus 110. It's it's split down the middle. I think in the weaker NFC, they get there. I think they can win with that roster. I think that's an at least 11-win roster in the NFC. AFC, I don't know if I'd give it that, but um, yeah. 
The the only compliment I've enjoyed tonight is JK. Remember when JK speaking of the Bucks real quick? Sorry, going back to the Bucks, but remember when he called me a younger Tom Brady? You remember that? <laughs> I do. I remember. I remember that vividly in the chat. Yeah, he right. said, "Scotty's like a younger Tom Brady." Certainly didn't say someone else. Oh, another. Hey, Rachel, what's up? Oh, Rach. Rach, you made it on the show. Hey, everyone. Wife, you have a wifey nice- in the background just peeking in. <laughs> Someone has to pack for that lovely car ride in the morning um, <laughs> that everyone in the chat, Rach, is very excited about. Yeah. Very excited. Hey, let's give some love to Rachel in the background. Welcome, Rachel, to the stream. What's up? <laughs> um, so with that being said, Scotty's getting ready for his trip. He's he's, get, he's getting off. Good luck with that, Scotty. We've all seen how officiating almost got L.A. after the three touchdown lead. Did he mean his rookie pick? Uh, did he, Scotty? I mean, how many people do I have to ban after tonight's show? I'm just kidding. Uh, maybe, but I'll still take a, I'll still take a younger Brady than his rookie pick. That puts me at like twelve. Chris, uh, Scotty said he is buying a dog on the trip. No, don't you put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> All right, so there we go. That's what we're looking at for the NFC West.